We had to come up with a good excuse to visit Wild Adventures. This place is full of reasons to learn about physics, starting with going in a circle. What if I'm moving in a circle on this ride at a constant speed? How am I accelerating? Anytime an object is traveling in a circular path, it is accelerating because its direction is constantly changing. Now remember, velocity is a vector. It has magnitude and direction. If either changes, velocity changes. And acceleration is defined as a change in velocity. Let me show you an example. You ever wonder why you can swing a bucket of water like this? And the water doesn't spill out? It's because of centripetal force. It's a word that means center seeking, and it's written F sub C. Centripetal force is any force that makes an object move in a circle. There's more than one kind of centripetal force, friction, tension, the normal force, or gravity. And any of these can act as centripetal forces if they cause the object to move in a circle. Here's another way to say it. Centripetal force is the net force acting on objects that keep them moving in a circle. When I swing the bucket, there are two questions. Which force makes the bucket move in a circle, and what keeps the water in the bucket? It's a fine balance here in keeping the water in the bucket. So what forces are acting on the water in the bucket? Well, let's draw a free body diagram of the bucket first when it's at the top of the swing. The force of gravity, F sub G, acts down. Tension, F sub T, acts down on the bucket as well. The force of gravity will act down regardless, but the tension force will always act toward the center of the circle. In this example, the tension force and the force of gravity create the net force, and together they make the bucket seek the center of the circle through the centripetal force. In a free body diagram, you don't write centripetal force per se. You write in the specific force or forces causing the centripetal motion, in this case, gravity and tension. So what forces make up the centripetal force when the bucket is at the bottom of the loop? You can see that the tension force still acts towards the center, and gravity continues to act down toward the Earth. So what keeps the water in the bucket? It's the normal force of the bucket on the water's inertia. Tension keeps the bucket moving in a circle. The water within the bucket experiences the normal force from the bottom. This force keeps the water moving in a circle. If we were in the middle of space, and there was no gravity, the water would still stay in the bucket as it was swinging in a circle, thanks to the normal force. And what force keeps the bucket going in a circle? Well, that's easy. It's the tension of the rope. Okay, what if there's no rope? For example, what force keeps a satellite orbiting the Earth? It's gravity that pulls the satellite toward Earth and keeps it in orbit, so the centripetal force is Earth's gravity. It's the tether that keeps the satellite orbiting around a central point instead of flying off into space. But keep in mind, it has to be going at a certain velocity to stay in orbit. If the satellite slows, it will give way to Earth's gravity and fall to Earth. So let's take a few circles around this track. The only difference between this and the bucket of water swinging in circles, the bucket of water swings in vertical circles. The circle we're traveling in here is horizontal. But the good news is, the same principles apply. So based on that, what forces keep this cart moving around the circular track? Frictional force is at work helping the tires grip the track and keeping the cart in a circular path. Vertical forces on the cart cancel out. The cart is center seeking, only in the horizontal direction. And how about when you make a sharp right turn and your body is slammed up against the left side of the car? What causes that? Is it centrifugal force? Absolutely not. Turns out centrifugal force is not a force at all. The real reason is explained by Newton's first law. Just like the water in the bucket, your body wants to stay in the same motion, except the go-kart is turning to the right. Your body is resisting the change of the circular motion and wants to continue in a straight line. That's inertia. So the force you feel is the car running into you as it seeks the center of the circular path in which it is traveling. Okay. So let's go back to our rotating bucket of water. We know why the water stays in the bucket. It's experiencing uniform circular motion. 
That's when an object moves in a circular path at a constant speed. Now, what do you think will happen to the bucket if I were to let go of the rope? What direction will the bucket move? The bucket's velocity is called tangential velocity, V sub capital T, because if tension lets up at any given moment, the object flies in a straight line that's tangent to the circle. So the direction of tangential velocity changes constantly as the object travels in a circular path. To measure how long it takes for the object to go in a full circle, that's called its period of revolution, capital T, or simply the period measured in seconds. Let's go to another ride. Recall from another segment that velocity is a vector quantity. It has direction and magnitude. The magnitude of V is speed, which is constant for uniform circular motion but we will call it our tangential velocity, since this speed and the tangential velocity magnitude have the same value. This ride does one full circle. The distance traveled is called the circumference and is calculated by multiplying the radius by 2 pi. And the time it takes to make a full circle is called the period. You write that as capital T. The tangential velocity of an object traveling in a circle is the distance around the circumference divided by the time it takes to travel around the circle once, which is the period t. And remember, if an object is moving in uniform circular motion, it is accelerating because its direction is constantly changing. This is called centripetal acceleration. Centripetal acceleration is equal to the tangential velocity squared divided by the radius of the circle that the object traces out. Centripetal acceleration is always perpendicular to the tangential velocity and always acts in the same direction as the centripetal force that's causing the object to move in a circle toward the center. Think of Newton's second law. An object will accelerate in the direction of the net force acting on it. In this case, the sum of the centripetal forces is equal to the mass of the object moving in a circle times the centripetal acceleration. Okay, here's an example. Imagine you're riding a roller coaster through the bottom of a circular loop. The loop's radius is 15 meters, and your tangential velocity at the bottom is 11 meters per second. If your mass is 50 kilograms, what is the normal force exerted on you? Drawing a free body diagram, we see that the two forces acting on you at that moment are gravity, down, and the normal force, up. By Newton's second law, we can write that the normal force minus gravity equals your mass times centripetal acceleration. Since centripetal acceleration equals tangential velocity squared divided by the radius, then you can substitute that to the right side of the equation. And to find out the normal force, rearrange the equation. And since the force of gravity is mass times acceleration due to gravity, you can substitute m times g for f sub gravity. Now plug in the numbers, and we find that the normal force at that point is 893 newtons. Compare that with the normal force you typically feel standing on the ground. 50 kilograms times g, you get 490 newtons. No wonder you feel so heavy at the bottom of the coaster loop. That's it for this segment of Physics in Motion. We'll see you next time. For more practice problems, lab activities, and note-taking guides, check out the Physics in Motion Toolkit.